Hi! Welcome to Create Utopia, in which hosts Chicory and Zero muse over modern issues in the style of so many modern millennials, while playing video games because they're the modern fireplace. We hope you enjoy it! Now on with the show! What are we playing today, Zero? Today we're going to do a Lost Game Roundup. That sounds where fun. Where we're going to try to finish our game of Long Live the Queen, try to finish our game of Faster Than Light, and if we do all that, we might jump back to our game of Civ Five. Wow. What are we talking about? It's the time capsule. We are talking about... Um, oh, God, what were we even doing? I don't even know. Oh, we were being a princess. That's right, right remember? Yes. Being a princess. Think princessy thoughts. Okay, so we are talking about how people think of each other, racism, and what makes a character good or bad. But mostly the first two, I think. Yeah, jumping right into that. We, I was, you sent me this article today, Zero, of uh, white male cops beating up on black women. And a lot yeah, of it- I got was, it from Twitter. Oh, you got it from Twitter? Okay. A lot of it is um, talking about white cops beating up on not just black women, which is in and of itself terrible because cops shouldn't beat up on anybody, but specifically pregnant women, as if they're not, you know, pregnant. And both are terrible, but come on, guys. Pregnant women! God damn. And so, personally, what I was thinking about this was oops, sort of like this mentality that we have of teaching, like, little kids who it's okay to hurt. Little little boys are like totally cool to hit other little boys and girls can hit girls or boys but they shouldn't because that's not very girly like behavior but boys should never hit girls but then that's like combined with seeing black people as like lesser and so black women don't get the context of being girls so they're not protected like that which is all terrible <sighs> and so i don't know i hope People in the future can just teach kids not to hit anyone, ever. So first of all, we got a cushion with a running horse on it. Do you think we should keep it or give it to Alice? We failed our foreign affairs check, so we don't know its significance. Whoa, wait, wait, what was it? A, a horse? A cushion with a running horse on it. Who's Alice? Our servant. Uh, does it have a, just a running horse? I guess give it to Alice. Cruelty failed, does that mean that we're nice? I don't know. Probably not. Just because you're not cruel doesn't make you nice. That's our second yeah. topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talking about it, so there's the Black Lives Matter mo movement and the discussion of people, let, let's let say, the, and there's the discussion of people who do their jobs poorly and the people who pay for it in our society are overwhelmingly minorities. And I think that this applies as well to the most common trope that people bring up, black on black violence. If the police were doing their job better, wouldn't there be less of that? Because they're supposed to be policing these areas. So I'm not sure how that gets the police off the hook as people seem to think it does. You and I, however, have different opinions on violence. That's very true. I'm sorry uh, I spoke like that, but I don't And I understand, true. yeah. You're, you're coming from a point of view that I think it's respectable to at least have the idea that you should view all people equally. You shouldn't give special treatment to somebody and then say this other race or group or gender is okay. It's, it's part of a trope called disposable men syndrome yeah. where like in films, it's okay for men to die, but women dying is something special. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the video, a hundred movies, a hundred headshots. Yeah. No, I haven't. Where it, it goes to a bunch of movies and people get shot in the head and it's extremely, and most of them are men. And it's extremely rare that you see a woman get shot in the face in film. And if you do, it's rare that there's blood splatter. Yeah. And that is an unfair trope. It is important to, if you're going to make an action movie and you're going to have violence in it, it is important to show that violence can happen equally to men and women. To to go back to the movie we have on our tangent list, Mad Max, that's one of the reasons that movie's good, is because there isn't actually less violence in that movie that happens to 
women than men, there are simply fewer women in that film. Which, I guess, but, could you argue that for a lot of action films, though? Oh, certainly. Except There's for- far more women in Mad Max than there are in most other action films to begin with. Because normally there's almost no, and the women in it are active, and they're just as violent as the men. It's even a plot point. Yay. I mean, not yay for violence, but... <laughs> I mean, first of all, I understand that sometimes violence is, I don't want to say even understandable, but I don't know. Maybe that there are some uses for violence. I just don't all right, I'll cl- like it. What? I'll clarify, and I'll say, to to put it in very simplistic terms, essentially there are situations where... If you sit down and you talk with a person or a group of people, there is no way to reach an agreement. And that person or group of people is doing a thing that you can only address by being violent in one way or another. I believe the first thing you should try is some sort of peaceful solution. Uh, Often we resort to violence because we feel it's quick. And if you're going to be violent, you need to be an extremely targeted form of violence. And I feel that that's what we do particularly poor with in the modern era, because nowadays wars and such are often just an excuse to get a bunch of our poor people killed by promising a better life if they can make it back alive. When we're fully technologically capable of having a more precise sense of warfare, and if we put more money into being precise as we did into just generally throwing money at a problem, we'd be a much more effective force and we wouldn't be as violent overall, but I don't believe that we should get rid of the violence entirely. Okay, well, let's just entirely table the military concept, and we'll come back to that, probably on another episode, but... I'm sure there will be a chance. Probably. But for this one, it's pretty simple, just that you should treat all people equally and not hurt them unless they are actively hurting you or hurting someone else. Is that pretty simple? Zero? Well, that brings up a question. If you believe you shouldn't hurt someone until they're actively hurting someone else, what do you do if you have a suspicion someone's going to hurt other people and you want to try to stop it? What would I do or what do I think that like maybe the police or someone else should do? Either or. Okay. Um, I'll use this story that I know. Some young person that I know who's very conservative and grew up in a very conservative area, found out that someone, an older person that I respect, voted pro-Obama, like for Obama. And his reaction to this was to punch the older person, like while their back was turned. And they did this like three times and they are a in, in shape individual. And so the older person was being physically hurt by this. Nobody noticed other than these two people because we were all walking around and doing things and not really paying attention. Eventually, like the second or third time this happened, uh, the older person went and talked to the guardian of the younger person and was like, look, if he does this again, I'm going to retaliate with violence. I'm really glad that he went and talked to the guardian before actually retaliating with violence because then only what people would have seen is the older person turning around and decking the younger person, and that doesn't look really good. If I had seen this, I would have immediately started yell or publicly berating the younger person for being violent to an older person, or to just to anyone, but for being violent and thinking that they could get away with it. So I guess, like, although there are some issues with public shaming, I think that this would have been a moment of group judgment and that would have probably solved the situation to raise awareness that we're all looking at this now we're all aware that this was happening there's like a third party witness you know blah 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 that makes sense i think that there's a lot of discussion well so first of all tournament coming up what do we want to offer the winner status and praise status and praise. we've never offered gold i've offered gold it's fine people like gold okay so there's, there's the discussion about bullying, right? Where people say, just ignore it and they'll stop because they don't understand what bullying is actually about. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they do. The idea that, so bullying is about power. A lot of masculinity in our culture is based around power. And it's based around putting your power in a place where others can see it. And like, it's very obviously on display. Mm-hmm. This 
and we've talked about the other and castigating them and in this case it sounds like the person involved who was doing the punching was attempting to show the other how wrong they were by using physical violence which they assumed was okay because this person was not part of their group you are different you're from a different group than me so it is okay to be violent to you and even if i get caught people will be okay with it because you're wrong yeah which they were wrong <laughs> they were wrong to believe that i think that they it's okay to be violent to someone outside of your group and i right. i think this would have in this case i think that it would have demonstrated to him that not everybody thinks that way so my my question is what if the older person had gone to like the guardian mm -hmm. of this of this person who was hitting them the younger person and the guardian had said well you deserve it for voting for that obama guy uh, who i totally don't think of as an n-word and will be very offended if he uses it <laughs> in a second sir, hold that in hold it back for one second <laughs> hold it back <laughs> Um, I think then I, what would have happened, I think, is that the older person would have also become violent, but I think that if he had let other, other adults in the group know this, who happened to have also voted for Obama, it would have, I think it might have, like, divided the group a little bit more if the Guardian had sided with the youth, but I think at the very least we would Honestly, the worst part is I don't know if all of the rest of the group would have believed the older person. And um, oh, always a risk. Always a risk, right? But I think that mm -hmm. if the older person had come to the rest of us, at least we would have been like watching it and with we tried to protect by being there with presence the older person. But I don't know if we would have been able to then apprehend and like punish the younger person for doing that. I don't even know if he was punched. All I know is that he was told not to hurt somebody else anymore. This one time. So I don't know if, yeah. if, if anything was learned from this. I don't know. Other than... Well, maybe someone can learn something now. Oh! I think it's just part of why the, the beginnings of the fallacy of it's okay to hurt some people sometimes. I think the only time that you should be able to hurt somebody is like when when they are specifically as an adult asking you to hurt them for some for some reason, like piercing your ear or something like that. Then you're paying somebody to pierce your skin. Well, so in the in the BDSM community, we talk about hurting somebody versus injuring somebody. Some it's okay to if someone asks you for it and you have consent. It is okay to hurt somebody. Yeah. It is not okay to cause them harm. Yeah. Because, and there's an important distinction there. It may seem very semantic to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Or I was thinking but, even not in the kink community of um, my, I have really strong hands from rock climbing. And I was going up to my neighbor and he, I was like, test out my strength, like squeeze my hand really hard. And he was like, no, I won't do that because you're a girl. Oh, snap. I know. I'm sorry, please continue with your I comment. I didn't realize you were into that sort of thing. I know. Anyway, I'm... Bow chicka... With your neighbor? Oh! Man. I know. That was a bragging moment. Anyway... Whoa. Whoa. Hold on. Our agent may have found out who knew the... Whoa! So what's going on? So there's the chocolates and it was, like, poisoned, right? Right. And our agent thinks she's figured out who sent the chocolates. <gasps> Your Our Aunt Lucille? Lucille tried to poison us. What? Even if she wrote the card, it doesn't mean she's behind the poison. Her husband. Our uncle inherits if something happens to us. Do we want to send our agent to Merva? Oh, I guess yes. we don't get a, ch a chance. Right. Crazy. Oh, and we're being invaded. Oh, great. This is a great week for you, Melody. It'll be fine. Anyway. Fair Princess Elodie will be fine. Um, I'm so sorry I interrupted you. It's, there's a difference between injury and harm in the king community? Yeah. Well, there's a difference between hurting somebody and injuring slash harming them. And that includes emotionally as well. Like, BDSM is not abuse, no matter how much people want to portray it as such. Yeah. 
it's it's extremely difficult. Do we want to recruit soldiers? Yeah. It's extremely difficult to be to trust someone enough that you can let them hurt you and trust them not to harm you. It is one of those really difficult trust barriers. Yeah. So it's sorry. Yeah. So like you when you are asking someone to like you are asking your neighbor to potentially hurt you Mm -hmm. and your neighbor didn't trust your own judgment that he wouldn't harm you because apparently he thinks girls are not as tough but that's he thought he was looking out for you and even though it's kind of like chauvinist it's not necessarily a bad thing because what if he had really hurt your hand and you couldn't have climbed or something you would have been really disappointed but at the same time, you think he could trust your control and his self-control a little bit more. I don't want to judge your neighbor too much, though. I don't know him, so that's a little unfair. He seems me. like a good kid. But do you, but just yeah, do you get the point I'm making? Yeah, but I would also like to point out that this is like a small addendum of the overall thing of you just should be taught not, not just to hurt not girls, but don't hurt anyone in your group, gender, race, whatever, or not. So that was my example with the, the, my neighbor had been taught, don't hurt girls. That was his specific If you'd been a guy and you'd asked him to test my toughness, he probably would have done it right away. Yeah, probably. That's an assumption, but probably. He gave that as a Do we want to direct the fleet or stay in the capital? Uh, Stay in the capital. We know nothing about ships. Yeah. (laughs) I think that's a good idea. Anyway, okay, so going on, I think that that, do you feel like we kind of summed that up reasonable? Do you have anything to add to that thought? If if that's what you want to talk about, it sounds fine. I, I agree. I think we should treat people equally. I don't think it is somehow more noble of you to decide, I would totally punch a guy, but I wouldn't punch a woman. That's It's not a particularly noble sentiment, no matter how much you think it is. It's It's insulting to the woman, and it's kind of insulting to guys, too. It makes guys disposable and women precious. I know. So, at least be consistent. I think it's terrible. I also want to talk say just really fast that it's just despicable to uh, you should still treat pregnant women like women if I was pregnant and I had asked him to squeeze my hand really hard I would still expect people to be able to trust my judgment and their own self control but to hurt somebody that is already in not in pain because not all pregnancies are in pain but you know in a fragile moment I think is, is despicable so well, I mean, in that article, they talk about people who had miscarriages because of this. Yeah. And the police officer saying, I don't care if you're pregnant. And there's the discussion of a lot of, to, to segue nicely into our next topic, a lot of the people who are racist, even if they don't want to say racist things out loud, don't think black people should be breeding. So they will be doing things like they will be extra hard on minority women and pregnant minority women because they don't want, you know... They don't want those colored people taking over the country. and Because, you know, they're so full of testosterone, they breed faster. Danger on the high seas. <laughs> Going from super serious to, like, 1920s announcer is very jarring. Zero. Ships close out on each other, angling into range. How long have you known me? <laughs> jarring is what I do. <laughs> That's true, but I'm still, like, just reeling from thinking about this... You're still processing the newsreel, and for me, this is a thing I've been contemplating for decades. I know! It's horrible. That's something we were discussing just before starting this, is um, talking about white fragility and how I'm I'm having a hard time talking about all of this stuff because it's all super new information for me, and so I haven't built up a wall about it. So it's like, every time Zero is sending me an article, I like am crying and super emotional about it and then I'm like ah oh. and then I'm tired and it's just it's a mess and you have no race relations calluses I know I don't think that I should try to build them up though I think it's it might be more useful for me to to stay tender on that and just try to still talk about it and face it myself and do stuff like that I don't know A0 <laughs> yeah well it's up to you. There's not, it's not necessarily bad to build up calluses to it because if you build up calluses, you'll be able to handle more of, more of it, which means you can dig deeper. Okay. But if you build up fewer, if you don't build up those calluses, you will feel it more. And those, those are, I don't say there's anything wrong with either. They're just different perspectives. It is 
either way, you are showing empathy because you are identifying with the people's struggles. There's lots and lots of ways to show empathy. It doesn't just mean you have to like remain super tender and <laughs> uh, cry a lot. That's not required. Okay, but that's what they showed in um, Pixar's Inside Out. That's the only way you can show empathy is through sadness and crying. You're the only sadness and crying. What were we talking about? Oh, we were talking about how just because <laughs> <laughs> you don't say the N-word uh, doesn't mean that you're not a racist. Just because... It's true! It is true! Next topic! <laughs> <laughs> Next topic! No, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this somehow, uh, President Obama went on a podcast and used the N-word and a bunch of people came out against him and were like, you can't say that as if somehow acknowledging that it exists makes it suddenly exist more. My favorite responses have been there are people online who've been calling President Obama that for years. Ugh, years now. Years. As if he's not aware that this exists. And then there are all these folks who are like, no, we're past racism in this society. You can't use those words as if the word is what creates racism and is not this. And this is the problem with stuff like the Confederate flag, all the pictures of Confederate generals. The idea is that you are not. These are all endemic of racism. The fact that you can't get the flag down from South Carolina's state house is because there are still lots of racist people. Even if you think it's part of your heritage for something, you're refusing to acknowledge that it is also a symbol of racism. As if just because one thing happened, you suddenly can't acknowledge that other stuff happened. It's kind of like our discussion on phobias last week and how even if you don't hate a gay person specifically, you can still be afraid of what the changes they're making in society will mean for you and therefore you are homophobic. Yeah, I totally remember that. Yeah, other people find your symbol to be horrible. It is a symbol of racism to them. Now that they have told you that, your demands that it stay up is deliberately offensive. When Niggers with Attitude names their band Niggers with Attitude, they know that they're here to defend people. That's part of their goal. They want to take back the word for themselves, and they're allowed to do that. They are trying to be offensive. You, can't, you don't get to say... I know that lots of people think this symbol is racist, but I don't. So therefore, it's okay if we keep it up. Is this like... You can say, I just don't care that you think it's racist. Yeah. But at least admit it. Zero. Is this like... Yeah. Um, do you remember Clerks 2, the movie? Yes, Porch Monkey. Yeah. Is this like that? That is the joke that was being made in that film. Okay. I, just wanted to... I don't know if I'd say it's exactly like that. No, I don't think it's exactly like that. But, yeah, it's, uh, oh, do we want to run away or meet with diplomats? We can run away now? I What's... don't know. Do we want to run away? Let's not run away. We do not. Well, so the king is interested in discussing a formal alliance. You want to meet with, we are a princess, right? Yeah, we are princessy princesses. Let's meet with the diplomats. All right, we're meeting with the diplomats. So this this brings my question to you, though. Which is, how do you feel about this whole thing? Again, this is a thing you deal with all the time from my perspective. Like, there's always some angry, like, white person saying, oh, you can't say that. You're not allowed to say those things. How dare you confront me with my racism by pointing out that maybe I'm racist when I never, I've never used the N-word. Not even to name that band. They'll always be NWA to me. It happens a lot where you, you do kind of get those calluses to it and people act like they are somehow exempt from racism by not using a word. Yeah, I think this goes back to... Um, I think that just because you don't use a word or just because you, um, you say something nice doesn't mean that you act nice, that you actually are respectful of them or of different kinds of people. And I, I don't know. Also, I think that you, in America, you should be able to say whatever you want. You just have to own the fact that if you say some words, you're going to be an asshole. I don't think you should be able to say whatever you want. I just don't think the government should be able to censor you. 
Okay, fair. As that's what our Constitution says. Our Constitution doesn't say private citizens can harass private citizens all they want. No, 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 no. no. It says the government cannot restrict your free speech. But a lot of people get that confused. They're like, I have free speech. You can't stop me from yelling and arguing with you as if I'm the government, I guess. Even though they hate socialism, usually. So it's very strange. I know. So I guess, obviously, I have gotten this confused a couple times. But, yeah, I don't... But then it becomes, like, self-policing or, like, group policing that's, hey, you shouldn't say this. Because at the end of the day, you can't, I think, as, like, a private citizen, maybe make somebody stop saying something. You can just counter counter their whatever they're saying. You know what I mean? People can't stop the Westboro Baptist Church from picketing or from having those like terrible signs but which they're doing at the funeral for the charleston harass, victims by the way or not harass but like counter protest the baptist church i'm sorry i did not understand what you said what did you say the westboro baptist church will be showing up to protest at the victims of the charleston shooting what assholes of course they are yep i think though that private citizens could maybe make a chain that would like bar them from entry or something or have like a greater showing of support then it's all gonna come down to what people do yeah so i guess that would be what i have to say about that one also i would like to point out that i think that the news people that did this that called obama out for using or not even called they pointed out that Obama used the N-word took what he was saying out of context. And so it, it's like, a- it d- took away, like, part of... They didn't focus on what he was trying to get across because they didn't want him to make that point. Well, that's the first step in the how, how do you prevent anything from changing in this country about race playbook. The first thing you do is you focus on something small. Check. Like you say, why don't they ever talk about black-on-black violence? Then you accuse them of race baiting by saying, by talking about black people and reminding me as a white person that black people exist, then you're just baiting me to think about black people, which will make me say racist things, as if somehow you can't control that. See, it's not that they're racist, it's that you brought up a racist thing and then they had to think racist thoughts. And so, and then you focus on the minutia and that's the trick. Then you don't have to confront a problem. All you have to do is deflect it until other people's, like, until a new scandal crops up. Just deflect, 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 pretend like it's not happening, and find something small to focus on that sure, you know, because apparently people are realizing that with the amount of actual states that have the Confederate flag, the Confederate flag was not a small enough thing to focus on, so they had to focus on one word out of a nearly two minute long answer. It's just absurd. I've actually never won that duel that way. Holy crap. What did you win? I'm sorry, I was thinking about things and... and... No, it's good. We just killed the king of the rival rival country with Destructo Disc. Wow! Like Krillin style? We basically used Solar Flare and then Destructo Disc. Nice! Yeah, it was very DBZ. I love that old man Roshi always has the sunglasses just for that. Yep, for Solar Flare. He knows Tien. Anyway... Yeah, I just think it's it's deplorable that they act this way. It's we were talking about narcissistic er- earlier and what it means to be narcissistic, and I think that it is extraordinarily self-preserving and narcissistic. Oh, it's certainly self-serving if it's not those other things. They don't want to think about it. Like they don't want to think that hard. Thinking that hard would force them to confront hard truths, like you were complaining about earlier. And forcing hard truths is difficult. You don't want to admit that white people can be terrorists because then you might have to confront either A, that terrorism is more than the simplistic thing you've reduced it to, or possibly, and sorry people, this is drastically oversimplified, or that terrorism can happen from people who believe like you. It's not just Muslims who can be terrorists. Christians can be terrorists, too. We had a better sense of that in the late 80s, early 90s, but we've kind of lost it. What happened, do you Pe- think? There are fewer bombings in Ireland now, for one thing, so it's not as many Christians killing each other. Fair. I heard... Well, never mind. Mm, go on. I heard one time that that was sort of why people cared so much about the 
the Holocaust is not just because it was terrible, but because it was like this was happening in like what we consider a quote unquote like first world or whatever that it was like a respected country instead of like the middle of Africa or yeah. Guatemala or whatever. That it was people that it, look like other Americans and look like French people and whatever. Yeah, it's a lot easier to kind of brush off a tragedy when it occurs to a group of others, like I said. If people look different than you, suddenly their tragedy... Um, do you remember when Hunger Games came out and everyone was like, why is Rue black? I just can't sympathize with her as much now. What? What? You, what? You weren't aware of that? There was a big outcry on the internet, despite the fact that she's described as dark-skinned in the books. Yeah, exactly. Of, Were they not reading the books? I don't... No, it, they said it was a big thing on Twitter. People were like, now that Rue's black, I I can't believe it. I cared about her so much. I, I don't as though you can't as much care anymore. about her just because she's like, what? Yeah, this was a thing. I bet you can still find records of it. You should try looking it up. I, I will after this episode and I will be super duper flipping <laughs> tables. Once again, a discussion. You're, and then you'll be like, zero, you owe me a picture of something adorable. <laughs> We made it. You've ruined my day for the third time. Gosh darn it, Zero. Fucking A. Who the fuck can't some fucking sympathize with a little girl that's dying because another child killed her? It's terrible. She doesn't have to be fucking white. It just should be bad enough. Like the pregnant woman thing. They're pregnant women. They shouldn't be like knelt on their chest because it's terrible. It doesn't matter. <sighs> okay, deep breaths. Trying to bring it in. Trying to bring it in, Zero. You better put that in the digest. That's the <laughs> best. Like the whole thing. I'll try. I feel like that will sum up it rather well. Okay, great. That's one of those things that like, oh, they didn't call her the N-word. But they're still being terrible people because they couldn't care about her just because she's black. On the plus side, there were some, like, clearly 13 to 14-year-old girls saying, I couldn't care about her as much as, like, does that make me racist? And I was like, yeah, dude, you're racist. That makes you racist, officially. But that's the thing. People are not taught that the if the fact that when a black person gets shot, you immediately jump to the police officer's defense is racist. You should give... If, if someone gets shot and a police officer shoots them, they should be equally innocent, which means your first impulse should be, it is possible this police officer shot this person unjustly. It is also possible that they were not shot unjustly because oh, innocent until proven guilty. But if someone is saying this person was shot unjustly, you should be equally willing to consider that. Otherwise, you are being racist. Amen feel weird saying that sometimes as an atheist <laughs> yeah yeah technically it means so be it okay then amen. it means you should go get a sobe vitamin water or something what what don't worry about it someone will get that joke and it will still be terrible okay great anyway so be it i heartily agree with you fucking a so yeah all of those girls or all of those people that were like, oh, Riz Black, now I can't feel bad that she died. You're racist. Sorry it's, it's now I don't feel as bad. I don't know if as many people said I can't feel bad now. That's a pretty, like, rough scene in the books and the movie. The yeah. first Hunger Games movie is kind of rough. Like, it's sort of inconsistent. But that scene remains pretty powerful. And the ramifications of it in the following movies are also really powerful. Yeah. I wonder how they felt when Cinna died. Probably. Spoilers? I guess he was a <laughs> on screen. He might be alive. No. Um, no, he doesn't die on screen. But, well, I'm not going to spoil what's going on. <laughs> Your aunt intends to take over Nova and rule as an unstoppable mother-daughter Lumen team. Wow. Well, we better nip that in the bud. Yeah, that seems like something we should deal with. Charlotte is a Lumen? No, your aunt intends to give her your power and your crown. We, our agent is oh. the best agent. Where are the journals? I want to see them. <laughs> ah, blah, blah, we didn't steal him. 
There's no proof. There's always doubt. Proof doesn't really exist. Hey, it's like what we were talking about. People can be racist in their heads and then just lie to themselves. I really think it should be illegal in this country to teach that slavery was not any reason for the Civil War. Maybe if you want to teach like about other potential reasons, I can get behind that. But you should always be required to teach one of the reasons for that war. Have you? Is that not a thing? Oh, yeah. Um, It's been a big thing. If you follow William Gibson on Twitter, he grew up in Virginia. That's actually where his Twitter name comes from. He's the Great Dismal, after oh. the, the Great Dismal Swamp. And he mentioned that he was taught growing up uh, that it, the war was, wasn't about slavery at all. And he's I've been getting a chorus. I've heard about that, that it was, like, it was like about loss of property. But then you're like, what were the properties that they were losing? Oh, it was slaves. I've been linking lots of those, too. Eventually, those arguments all come down to slaves. But essentially, like, it's gone roundabout with all people who are younger than him mentioning, yeah, I was taught this in school, too. Yeah, I was taught this version. And the most recent one I've seen is someone who graduated in 2006 who was taught that. And somebody who was taught it, like, up in Ohio. Or was it Wisconsin? Somewhere up in what is definitely the North. Definitely. We're Yankees, right? But part of that is because a lot of textbooks are printed in Texas. So if Texas decides something should be in the curriculum, it actually spreads all over the country. Wait so, a Texas. Yeah, if Texas decides global warming isn't a thing and that they have to print that in their textbooks in Texas, a lot of other states will get similar information because that's where their textbooks are printed. Maybe we Also, should... <laughs> schools can't necessarily buy new books either. What if we printed everything in, like, San Francisco? Oh, my God. We'd, we'd have a big gay country so quickly. <laughs> Everyone would be like, what's so dangerous about the Castros? It's fabulous. <laughs> I am sorry, San Francisco. That is such a horrible <laughs> stereotyping of you. If we have listeners in San Francisco, they probably like really enjoyed it, I hope. Please, guys and girls. And maybe and girls, people, people whoever you are. Whatever are, gender them. you prefer to be called. I meant it in all the best. It was somewhat intentionally offensive, but uh, I was amusing myself. Okay. Do we decide Lucille is guilty or is the musician lying? Uh, Lucille is the aunt, right? Yeah, who probably sent us the chocolates. Well, I guess whether or not she sent us the chocolates depends on whether the musician is lying. Yeah. This whole plot has come from the musician. But let's go with Lucille is guilty and just see what happens. Well, we know someone sent us poison chocolates. And that they, they started out from Merva, as according to our person. The only reason why the musician might be lying is because she didn't steal the coded journals your aunt had. So we don't have proof of what she's saying. But I don't know that she's given us reason not to trust her necessarily, except that she's not a great musician. Fair. Is, Which is uh, why we is, hired her as a spy. Is, why would Lucille... Oh, Lucille would be bad because she like is next in line for the crown, sort of. Yeah, if we die, her her husband becomes the regent, and her daughter would become queen. Mm, decide Lucille is guilty. All right. What are we going to do about our cousin, though? We love our cousin. And we have a spare lumen crystal. Yeah, Go we should now, bring the cousin would. in. Oh, the Mervyn Serpent's Nest. Wow, so that means that when the snake attacked us at the beginning, it's actually possible that Lucille got her own daughter bit by the snake. Because the snake does show up as soon as they show up. Mm. I'd never well I've never done this plot train before anyway carry on you were saying something about revisionist Sorry, history revisionist history oh my god Freak them. these are some non-violent options jeez uh, uh, jeez Pete's banish the entire family so but then they the op- can yeah. come back execute Lucille only execute Lucille and Lauren execute Lucille banish the rest execute the entire family banish the entire family if we executed the entire like the parents our cousin would hate us and probably I, try. I feel like all of these options will result in our cousin hating us how many other supporters do we have? Like, do we need the family in any way? I guess if we're willing to do any of these, then no, we don't need the family. Pretty much. We just got the Duke of Sedna's help. We will almost certainly have to marry him. Darn. I hear he's Orlando Bloom dreamy, though. <sighs> That's pretty dreamy. Whoa. Almost I mean, perfect. it might not be Johnny Depp dreamy, but... To me, I don't know. There's personal taste there. Anyway, uh, I guess... 
Just execute the entire family. Whoa, okay. It's like the, the Fremen way of doing things. If you cut it off, then there'll be no loose ends, right? Now it's finished. Fair. That's what I was saying before. I'm glad you came around to my side. Wait, no! Darn it! Maha, <laughs> the advisor always wins. What were we talking about? Um, what makes a good character? Oh, wait, no, racism. Well, <laughs> That doesn't um, make a good character. Well, it could make a good character. It could make a good fictional just, character. Yeah, just not a it positive character. It does not make character. a good person. Yeah, it doesn't make a positive person or character. Yeah, I don't know. I think that we've, we've pretty much gone through this one. You can be homophobic without calling people the F word. You can call... You can be misogynist without calling girls the B word or the C word. You can be racist without calling black people the N word. That's actually a really good way to put it. Uh, I'm surprised we didn't bring that up earlier. There are lots of bad terms for people, but you can be sexist and homophobic without using those terms. They are not required to make you have be a bad person. I think it just makes it more um, insidious because it's like then you, if there's no, if you are like only sliding to people and do things like in a in a way that's much hard as a person in privilege much harder to get caught through then it yeah it's more insidious it's it's people don't want things people want things to be clear cut so we can point and be like look man nazis killed millions of people they're really obviously bad by not being as bad as them i am therefore not bad no that's not how it works also it allows people to use coded language like the thug yeah. conversation i would never use the n-word but those black people are thugs and the worst part about that is sometimes you convince yourself that you're not being racist. You're just being quote unquote accurate. You know, you're accurate in the same way that reports from the 1860s said that black people will never be happy independently. It can only be happy as servants. People believed this. This was an honest thing that people thought was true and had convinced themselves, yes, this is a fact. Here's the thing. If you run around and call every black person a thug who can puff themselves up to two times their size as an 18-year-old to threaten you as an experienced person, you're probably racist. And you're not going to fix that by telling yourself, I'm not racist because I don't use the N-word. If you actually not want to be racist, you have to actually confront your own racism. You can't just run from it. And warning, it's not the most fun. Be ready for that. It's not fun to confront your own Failings. It's not fun to fix your problems. Oh, uh, what type of change do we want to have? It's not fun to change. Change is hard. I guess, well, yeah, it can be fun to change, maybe. Like, falling in love changes a person. Becoming a parent changes yeah. a person. Those are, like, kind of yeah. good things. But they're not easy things. Generally, well, as people get things. older, they develop more inertia. And they start to buy more into a sunk, the sunk cost fallacy. So it becomes, as you get older, it becomes harder to change. Not because it's actually difficult to change, but because you don't want to as much because you're all, you're like, as you get older, you tend to get more comfortable. People who are uncomfortable find change easier because they want to be in a different place. But if you're a certain age and you have a good job and you've got a lot of money in your savings and you like the location you're in, then you're going to be uncomfortable with change and you're going to be uncomfortable with being presented with the fact other things in your area may not be turning out as well as you. And to a certain extent, if you're, say, a person who's lived in this neighborhood for 15 years and suddenly the new black family moves in next door, you might be uncomfortable with that change because maybe you haven't encountered a black person since you lived in the city 20 years ago and you're like, I knew some good black people in the city, but a lot of them were thugs. Yeah. What type of feast do you want to have? Come on. We're a princess. Extravagant. Sorry. Respectable. Extravagant. We could be, you know, a fiscally responsible princess, I guess, and do respectable. Which one do you prefer? More princessy than that. Extravagant. Roasted meats, cakes, chocolate, wine, enough for everyone. And I can give out commemorative cups and coins. Oh, she's the cutest, and I would totally do that party. It would be the cutest thing. I'm going to check our treasury. Accounting failed. Oh, 3,474 gold Lassie and 83 silver to Lassie. We're fine. Really? Yeah. Okay. Then yay! That's fine. Splurging a little for parties is okay. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Now what? 
You want to talk about character a bit? Uh, yeah. What makes Let's a wrap it up good on character. or bad? Why do we like some characters more than others and stuff like that? Um, I went and saw Inside Out this week, Zero. And mm -hmm. under the thing that my, my, my friend, my comic friend was like, oh, you have to see this. It's so like original and good and cool and blah, blah, blah. And so I went and watched it and it was like, what was it? Childhood Therapy, the movie. And it's like, here's like a language that you can talk about your feelings and emotions with. Blah, blah, blah. And I don't know, like, it's good in that, but like, I didn't find the characters that interesting and stuff like that. I don't know. They were okay. It's a cute movie. It's cutie cute cuter sense, but not driving or intense or anything like that. I saw Jaws last weekend. That movie's intense. I bet. I've actually never seen Jaws. I actually talked to my dad on Father's Day after seeing Jaws, and he's like, do you ever see any movies from that came out recently? And I was like, no, I like to see good movies, so I only see old ones. Ayo! And then I mentioned okay. that I'd seen, like, Fury Road and a bunch of other stuff. Then we talked about the Fantastic Four movie coming out. Yay! Um, so yeah, there were terrible movies back in the day, too, Zero, first. I know, two, I don't watch those either. There are good movies that are That's such a now. lie. <laughs> You've seen my what? movie collection. What? I what totally watch movie? terrible movies like Plan 9 from Outer Space. I know. I love terrible movies. They're great. They're fun. Your, They're your a lot husband of fun. and I used to watch like so many of them. I know. I had to do that too. I was forced. Well, I wasn't forced. But <laughs> I was I didn't have yeah, we go. tied you down and you hopelessly were forced to watch like, Can't peeled Sleep Alone Massacre. Eyes. Yeah, it was very Clockwork <laughs> Orange, but sadly we weren't watching Clockwork Orange. I know. Yeah, like Can't Sleep Away, all of the old ones. Um, but sometimes All the you classics. watch really scary ones. Like, um, what was the one with the plant that, like, once it touched you, it was, like, in you? It's, like, super fast spreading and fast growing. What was that? The Ruins? I think that was it. I don't think I watched that one with you guys. Oh, man. Check it out. My Is brother, I was, like, really plant? freaked out, because I get freaked out after watching scary movies. Um, my brother was like, think about it. There's nothing that this plant couldn't be cured with like two planes of ancient orange and i was like that's true <laughs> <laughs> that is an excellent way of thinking about it <laughs> anyway and then uh, my other friend and i were talking about uh the opening to up and whether or not oh my gosh I f i'm forgetting her name the late the old lady from up the wife a, like a good character and whether or not she's a three-dimensional character so what is a three-dimensional character Arguably, a three-dimensional character is a character who expresses wants, needs, desires, good and bad traits, and in such a manner that you believe that they are a realistic human. So there is no set definition on what a three-dimensional character is, but their comparison is cardboard characters who only express a very limited range of emotions and motivations. So, for example, Snidely Whiplash mm -hmm. would be a two-dimensional character because he does evil for evil's sake and seems to have no other life goals than evil. Yeah. He's actually almost a one-dimensional character. He's basically a one-dimensional one character. Although that's also his he, joke, because he plays off against, what, um, Dudley Do-Right, who has no goals but to do good. Although Dudley Do-Right also is an idiot. So he's kind of got... He's, he's a good-looking, noble hero who does good things and is really dumb. Yeah. But our example was Ellie. That was her name. I looked it up really fast. Ellie, she wanted to go to this place... She wanted to have a kid, and then she was not able to have a kid, and so she had to do that. Did we succeed? We did. Yay! Look at her and her little crown. Yay! Keep going. You had stuff about oh. Ellie. Um, so yeah, so she had, like, wants and desires, but I, I don't know if she ever was, like, not good, or if she was something other than good. You know what I mean? She was sad, I guess. When she couldn't have kids, she was sad. But then she went and worked for the zoo, and like everything kind of worked out, right? Yeah, she's definitely shown from a very... There, there's a bit of an unreliable narrator in Up, because she's definitely shown from the perspective of her husband. Yeah. And he remembers her as... She's mostly an angelic figure in that film. Yeah. Rambunctious, I guess. She, she is his manic pixie dream girl. Oh, man. Can you explain really fast what a manic pixie dream girl is? 
Uh, so we married the guy. Fine white horses. Incur- While he enjoyed his new place, he was clearly in no hurry to provide an heir to the throne. Once his daughter was secure on the throne, Jocelyn returned to his birthplace to focus on his duties as Duke of Cloris. He soon became engaged to Countess Siren. Our dad got remarried. Boom. With the danger of a rogue lumen weighing on their minds, the squad sent to deal with Lucille, Countess of Nyx, up to strike quickly and without warning, to eliminate her before she could bring her powers to a kill on sight. The massacre was bloody but brief. The entire Mervyn Ducal family, as a number of guards and servants who also happened to be in the way, were wiped out, young children included. Ooh! You, uh, how very Game of Thrones of you. I wish I knew that the tone to reigns of Castamere. With no heirs remaining, control of Mervyn reverted directly to the crown, as it had been before Elodie's mother granted it to her brother. While this was easily accepted by Novin nobility, the common folk of Merva were not so agreeable. A minor rebellion was soon underway, in which administrative paperwork and tax revenue were constantly misplaced, and accidents befell any official who tried to investigate. Merva was a small province with few resources and a small population. It hardly seemed worth the effort of seeing the royal army to keep order. A balance slowly developed in which the rest of Nova prevented Merva didn't exist, and vice versa, and the Mervins liked it that way. So Mervins got their, like, freedom or something, kind of the way that, like, some of the uh, Caribbean islands kind of got their freedom? Yeah, kind of. The subject of magic illusions remained a slightly uncomfortable one for the citizens, perfectly fine for the queen, who had inherited it by divine right, but not saying other people should be aspiring towards. Look at all the terrible things that happened when that power fell into the wrong hands. Oh no! As a publicly, as an openly acknowledged Lumen, Juliana, Duchess of Ursula, was met with public suspicion whenever she journeyed outside of her duchy. At times, that suspicion was accompanied with thrown vegetables. It did not matter that Elodie supported her fully as a member of the noble court. That only led to the commoners to whisper that Juliana was a bad influence on their queen. Oh no, that's the saddest! After the failed invasion, relations with Shandia remained tense. The recriminations of Anne from the Queen, devastated by the death of her husband, which Elodie ignored, rightfully so. Next to him, the subler approaches the quiet gratitude and offers for alliance from ministers who were thrilled to see Togami gone. Elodie ignored those also, which was just as well, since the next thing to arrive was the preserved head of one of those traitorous ministers, sent by the Queen of Sanji as a warning. There was no sign of war in the immediate future, but there was not likely to be an alliance either. Mm. I always wonder if you get an alliance with them. As a Lumen, it was Elodie's responsibility to defend Nova from monstrous threats. She decided that the monsters within the realm were every bit as dangerous as those outside, and thus set herself to the task of conquering the old forest. Each monster would have to be identified and carefully studied in order to defeat it without upsetting the balance. It would take many years to reach the heart of the forest, but Elodie was undaunted. Thus, Queen Elodie's legacy stretched into the future. The cold, heartless future. We did it! cousin. With only a little bit of murder! Yay! So, would Elodie be like a three dimensional character? I would. I think Elodie's a very three dimensional character, but part of that is you get to control her decisions. But, like, the printing press decision, where you know it's a good idea and I know it's a good idea, but if you don't make Elodie smart enough before you get there, she will refuse to make it. Didn't that happen to us this time? Yes. Yeah, we did, did not have the printing press. So yeah, <sighs> I I feel like we can wrap up there. We did manage to finish it. It took longer than I expected, but yeah, we knocked it out. We finished our Long Live the Queen game, and we, and we didn't die. Yay! Success! Woo! Do we want to also wrap up with our thing? How long have we been recording? Yeah. Looks like about an hour. We can wrap up. Okay, so let me see. Final thoughts. Everybody's favorite thing, final thoughts. What were the final thoughts? I will just read what I have written down in all caps to review. (laughs) Be fucking kind. How hard is that? Don't tape dogs' mouths really closed shut hard. Don't beat on pregnant women. Don't beat on anybody. Come on! Wow, that was just directly what you had written. You didn't even try to clean that up. No, I don't think it needs to be cleaned up. It sounds like you came into this episode with opinions, and you didn't really change your opinions. Is that okay? Uh, you know, I kind of, I thought about it with, uh, with, like, when is violence acceptable and blah blah blah, and I thought about it with, with racism and things like that, and I don't know, I, I feel like once in a while it, it's okay for me to start the episode with more positive thing and not have to be corrected every time, maybe? I think it's perfectly fine. There's there's no reason why 
you should have to absolutely change the way you think every time we have a conversation. I don't no, I don't feel like I made any particularly strong arguments against the way you were thinking either. You helped clarify, I think. That's I'm glad I could help. Provided other examples and stuff, right? But I don't feel like I properly broke your spirit, and that's a little disappointing. <laughs> I came to the table with it kind of broken. <laughs> you came broken. to the table shattered. There was no more shattering to do. And I feel there's like, until your glass heart is ground into its const its original sand, there's more work I could do. Let's be honest. <laughs> as your evil advisor. I, no. No. As your mostly ambivalent to, advisor? I feel like then I'll just heat it up again and... and get it back to being glossy but like a marble is hard to break maybe i could do that you know yeah sure something i will always be the steamroller to your marble oh wah, wah. i'm here to anyway help in any case thanks for watching and i'm chicory and my co-host zero um don't comment but please 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 like and sub subscribe tweet with us on twitter i am one two three chicory Zero. I'm zero utopia for what should be obvious reasons. <laughs> anyway, have a nice day. Be nice to each other. Be so. excellent to each other. Bye.